I've got a Photoshop tutorial for you today where we're going to look at banners and banners are a great little design element to use to integrate text and to use in icons and to pull text into uh, logos and illustrations and things like that. Just for example I'll show you this wallpaper I did where I used a banner type element to pull the type away from the graphic here in the middle. Another way you can use it is just a very simple little subtle hints here and there. In this case I did an overlay for Syndicate's live stream and a banner was behind his name where his image would fall on a, on a live stream. So these are just a couple different little examples on, on what banners can be used for and I'm going to show you kind of a quick way to build some of these. So you're going to open a new canvas and it doesn't really matter the size, it's just kind of what you're going to end up working with. So my canvas is 150 dpi and it's 1800 pixels in width and about a thousand pixels tall. So the first step I want to do, since we're going to create banners that are symmetrical, we're just going to work on one side. So let's go ahead and create a new guide. So view, new guide. And we want to set the orientation to vertical and we want to set the position to 50%. And that's going to tell us our center point of the entire document. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. And you're going to use your rectangular marquee tool. And what you want to do is go ahead and drag out a selection that you would kind of imagine your text to fall upon. So I'm going to create kind of a wide, narrow band. And I'm just going to create the banner to show you here first. Uh, you'd probably want to lay the text out first and just see how wide you want to, you want to create it. Uh, but since we're just showing the banner, I'm going to show you how to create this part. So next thing you want to do is fill this with the color with, with an, on a new layer. So go ahead and I'm going to select kind of this magenta color. And then click OK. And go ahead and since I have my magenta color, this is a little shortcut. If it's set as your background color and you have a selection drawn out already, on a Windows PC you can, you can hold Control and press Delete. And I'm pretty sure it's quite similar on a Mac, but I'm not certain. But that will fill your selection with the background color. So go ahead and Control delete to hide that selection. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. So I'm just going to drag it down to a new layer. Otherwise, you can do Control J. And so let's take the layer that's now below. And let's just kind of move it out a little bit. And this is going to be where the tail of the banner kind of comes b beneath your text and hangs out to the left side. So now that you have it kind of moved into place, let's go to Image, Adjustments, brightness contrast. I'm going to click on use legacy and I'm just going to slightly darken this just so I can get a little bit of depth. So now we can see both of our blocks. And so you can keep moving this around until you, you get it where you want it. Now we need to kind of create the connector piece. So in between these layers you want to create a new layer. And let's go ahead and pick a new color to fill it with that is in between these two colors. So I'm going to pick something a little bit brighter than my darker color. And this is kind of where you start to freeform it a little bit. You want to use your polygon marquee or polygon lasso tool. And let's go ahead and zoom in. And now you want to just kind of decide where you want this banner to end. So I would think I'm going to draw a guide just to kind of show you better. I'm going to kind of have my banner start and stop kind of right about there. So let's drag out, let's zoom in, and let's drag out another guide to the top banner. And what we're going to do is just create a selection from the, from the bottom left corner of your main banner selection. So click once, and then click twice where you want it to connect. And then hold shift and, do a, and make sure that, that your, your tool is, is at a vertical selection. And there you have kind of just a, a triangular selection. So what you want to do is go ahead and fill this with your, your background color. So now, if we hide guides, we can see our banner is starting to take shape. We don't want all of this extra on the right-hand side, though. So let's go ahead and use your rectangular marquee tool and just make a selection up into that connector piece. I'm going to zoom in to make sure my pixels are on target here. And since we really don't need this piece, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. So make sure your background 
your very back piece is selected and then simply click delete to get rid of that and that's essentially one half of a banner you can easily replicate this and do the other side and leave it as that also another cool thing to throw in here is angles uh, just to give it a little more style so if you want to take your polygon lasso tool again the uh, like so and let's do another selection triangular selection let's click our or select our topmost layer and we want to go again from the bottom left corner and we're going to drag out a selection up top and we're just going to give it kind of a little bit of a end here and simply click delete make sure that make sure that has hit this bottom corner down here all right we're looking good so don't lose that selection just yet go ahead and move that selection down to where your your back piece is and do the same thing to the end so select that piece or that layer and delete so now we need a little bit of an angle on the part where it connects. So let's go ahead and create another selection with your polygon marquee tool. And we're going to give this just a slight angle on this connector piece. So something like that. See, I'm just going to kind of shave off a little bit of an edge. So you want to shave both your background and your, your connector since they're an overlapping layer. So let's go ahead and, and delete the connector piece. And you'll see this background piece is now showing through again. So also get rid of that piece and hit control D to deselect. So we're starting to get kind of this cool banner edge. One thing, another thing to do to give it depth is go ahead and use your burn tool and set the hardness to 0% and the size. It's really dependent on your document. You want kind of a brush about this size, see in, in relation to uh, my banner. So that's about 140 pixels for me. And then what you want to do is slightly burn where the banner would overlap. So it overlaps kind of right on this edge. So I'm just going to slightly burn that edge a little bit. Kind of like so to give it some depth. I'm also going to go to that connector piece. I'm going to select our middle layer. And I'm going to burn just underneath where the main text would be. Just like so. Now there's a ton of other little details you can do to this banner. Uh, but we're going to leave it like this for now. I'm going to show you another technique. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my guide back on. And I just want my center guide, so I'm just going to get rid of these other two guys that I used. And I'm simply going to select all of these layers and control E because I'm basically done with them. Uh, and then I'm just going to shave off right to the center point with my rectangular marquee tool. Now control J to duplicate that layer, edit, transform, flip horizontal. Make sure you have snap on and snap to guides is on under view. Now just holding shift, just drag that new layer to the left or to the right, I'm sorry, until it locks in. Control E, control semicolon to hide your guides, and there you go. You have just a basic banner element that's really easy to use. Uh, pretty much wherever you want. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you kind of a different uh, way to get kind of a curved banner. And we're going to do this style in more of a cartoonish type style. So I'm going to turn my guide back on. Control semicolon to turn that on. Create a new layer. Now let's go ahead and get our brush set. So click your brush tool and then if you're on a, a Windows PC you can just right click on the canvas to bring up brush attributes. Uh, we want a hard brush and we want to set the size to something kind of like a pen stroke so not not too thin uh, not too big but let's set it around for me 20 pixels and it's important to kind of remember that number so now that we have that set let's go ahead and use our pen tool make sure that it's set to path and again we're gonna kinda of draw out our, our bottom side of the banner so imagine this shape here 
let's kind of do that shape again, but but curved, more like it's hand drawn. So I'm gonna make us. I'm gonna start my point to the right side of the guide, and I'm going to click another point where I want that curve to kind of be. And it's kind of important that you keep your your path is pretty flat wherever it's gonna cross the guide, because that's where we're gonna cut it and we're gonna duplicate it and mirror it. So you want to just kind of create like an S, basically. Kind of like so. And you can get kind of crazy with it. Do whatever you want. So we've just basically drawn out the bottom of how our banner is going to lay. So now that you have your, your path drawn, you can simply right click and stroke path. The tool you want to use is brush. And we already set our brush to the way we wanted it, and you don't want simulate pressure on. So click OK. And there you go. Another step that I forgot to mention is make sure you choose like a darker black or gray, whatever you want the outline color to be. That's what the, the, the path is going to make the, the, the brush stroke with. So let's hit enter, enter a couple times, or once, and get rid of that path. Now you want to click control J to duplicate that layer and hold shift and simply drag that up to however tall you want your banner to be as you can see we're kind of making um, we're, we're doing the same thing as we did on the the blocky banner but we're just gonna do it curved so now your upper side is technically on a Z index is gonna be in a vertical space would be below your bottom side because we're kinda looking at it from the from the top down so let's go ahead and drag that layer and make sure that your top the top of your banner is the layer uh, the, the most bottom layer that we have so far now what you want to do is use your line tool and remember that brush number we had before we want to make sure that this is set to shape we want the fill color to be the same as the outline so you can go ahead and use the color picker and then take a, a swatch of that color you used if you want either on the stroke itself or over here on the, uh, the, the tools palette click OK. Now that number we're going to use uh, we don't want a stroke on it it doesn't this doesn't matter you want to have the weight the same as your brush so I'm going to set this to 20 pixels. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up and just make the edges just create a new layer and holding shift you want to draw the ends of this banner so let me zoom in so you can see so I'm simply gonna gonna use my cursor and just kinda eyeball where the center point is on this banner edge and I'm gonna hold shift and click and just drag out my new line just like so and you want to do that to all the vertical kind of spaces so I'm gonna do it here as well and once you do this enough you'll get better at it and can can line up the edges somewhere and just like so and this is a, a very easy way to get a, a much more consistent banner in Photoshop uh, using this method so now we want to mask away some of the the parts that are going to be falling underneath our banner because we don't want this edge here and that's about it actually so let's go ahead and that shape I'm gonna select it and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my eraser tool because I'm not really gonna need to mask this to use for later for anything so I'm gonna turn my hardness all the way up and I'm gonna use a smaller brush brush size for the eraser tool and I'm just gonna erase this part that I don't need here just like that see that now our shape layer right click and rasterize that layer and then do the same there we'll just get rid of this piece here and I have a little bit of the other layer coming through just like so now select all of those layers by holding shift and select them control E to merge them let's shave off the part we don't need right side up until the guide delete Control J to duplicate that layer. Let me zoom out once. Edit, transform, 
flip horizontal. Hold shift, drag it to the right until it snaps into place. Control E, and let's hide the guides. Control semicolon, and there you go. You have kind of a, a curvy, little bit more cartoony style banner. So these things come in handy all over the place, let me tell you. Um, you can use them in all sorts of designs. You can vary them up a little bit. So like if I go back and uh, I'm just clicking back a few times in my history to where uh, these pieces aren't uh, connected. And if I simply go to edit, transform, flip vertical, you can do something like this as well. You can line it up since we know that all the edges are correct. Control E and you can do something like that too so it's it's cool to put something behind here if you want you know put text across it and just have fun with it uh, take a couple more minutes let me just show you how to put some text on we'll, we'll use the pink one here so I'm gonna hide my outline banner and I'm gonna move this into place and I'm gonna make the text let's see let's make it a uh, white color and what should we type? We'll type banner. Now you just kind of want to merge this or, or, or get this in the center. And then edit, transform, and I think we can use skew if I'm... No, we can't. Okay. So control T to size this up. So let's get this about to where it fits within the banner, like however, however we like it. I'm going to hit enter. Now right click and rasterize type on that layer. I go to edit, transform, and perspective. And you can kind of just bend this into place. And you can apply a, a ton of other effects on this. Uh, one cool little effect is just simply applying a drop shadow to, uh, to this size. So layer effects, drop shadow, uh, blend mode can be multiply, click off gl global light, set the angle to 90. Then you can do whatever you want. I like to set the size to zero and pull the distance back just a hair and then set the opacity to like 50%. There you go. So you can do something like that. So it's a very versatile little design element. You can use it all over the place, and uh, it comes in handy when you get stuck sometimes. <laughs> so I hope you'd uh, like this, and hopefully I'll bring you more if I can think of things. All right, take care. Bye.